In this video, we'll go over why becoming a real estate millionaire was one of the toughest journeys I've ever gone through. So that you can avoid the mistakes that I made and learn the mindset and actions to take to become a successful millionaire in real estate as well. Hi, my name is Ryan Chaw, your friendly neighborhood real estate investor, and I show new investors how to get their first profitable deal. Now, you've probably heard this a million times by now, but the traditional path that we are taught throughout our life is to go to school, take these classes, end up with X degree, X degree will get you X job, and X job will pay you X amount. Then, save and invest into index funds, and then maybe someday, when you're in your 50s or 60s, you'll become a millionaire. The problem with this advice is that, unfortunately, it's not the real road to success and not how most millionaires build their wealth. And if you were taught it was, you were taught something that is unfortunately no longer true with today's skyrocketing home prices, inflation, and taxes. In fact, as you can see on this graph, if you saved $40,000 every single year, it will take 25 years to become a millionaire, even knowing that most people can't save $40,000 a year. And as you can see in this CNBC article, if you invest $1,050 per month at a 6% yearly return, you will become a millionaire after about 30 years. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to wait 30 years to become a millionaire. Not to mention that a million dollars in 30 years is probably worth only about $500,000 today. Every millionaire that I've talked to have said they've become a millionaire in only one of two ways. That is, they've either invested in real estate or they run a business. Or they did both. Now, the great news is that if you live in America and if you're willing to learn something new, you can build your net worth to seven figures in real estate pretty fast. In fact, I've been able to do it in just four years. And I'll tell you about how I did it later in this video, so stay tuned. Now, before I get into my actual story, let's talk about where I started out. So you know that I basically started at zero dollars where most people start off. And when I began exploring real estate, it felt like, for me at least, being thrown into a foreign country and not even knowing the language. Needless to say, I felt pretty overwhelmed. To make things even worse, I was working a job that had an uncertain future because I had a manager that didn't like me and threatened to fire me. As you can imagine, this made me feel very vulnerable financially as well as emotionally. I remember still waking up in the middle of the night sweating because I just had a nightmare where my boss was gathering up enough evidence to get rid of me. I tell you this story for a good reason, and that is because no matter who we are or how hard we work, if we work a W-2 job, the fact is, we can always be replaced. It can be as something as simple as a company downsizing because of a recession, or just a decrease in company profits. This is exactly what happened to my mother in 2008 when she got laid off. And when Facebook slash Meta laid off 13% of its employees. Luckily, there is a way to build true financial security for yourself, even if this happens to you. Which I'll talk about in a moment, so make sure to stay tuned. A turning point along my journey of investing was when I read this empowering book that literally changed my life called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. This book is about how to build financial freedom through passive income. And after I had finished reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I was completely sold on the idea of replacing my W-2 job income with passive income from real estate. And to build it up slowly while still working my 9 to 5 job. Unfortunately, back in 2016, there was a lack of good quality real estate education. I had no straightforward path to follow, so I had to learn through trial and error, which was really frustrating. And as you can imagine, this led to many mistakes that lost me over $30,000 on my first rental. And I cover these mistakes and how to avoid them in my video titled, Your First Rental, Four Common Mistakes to Avoid. And I'll put that link down below in the description so that you can avoid these mistakes as well. Even though I lost over $30,000 on my first rental, I didn't give up because I believed in perseverance. I think I actually got this from my dad. 
My dad one time argued with an internet provider representative for over eight full hours until finally he got our monthly internet bill cut in half for the rest of the year. I learned from this that it pays to become stubbornly persistent when it comes to your goals. However, I didn't want to waste my time in real estate and I wanted to invest in real estate the smart way. Unfortunately, because I lived in California, it was an expensive housing market, so I literally could not make any cash flow doing traditional single family home investing. Instead, I tried out different strategies until I stumbled upon a unique one that was highly profitable. I actually discovered this from my friend who bought a property nearby the college and rented out to his college buddies. Not only did he live for free, but he was basically making way more income by renting by the bedroom versus the whole house. I took this one step further and started buying single family homes and really maximizing the amount of bedrooms I could put in a house. This led me to literally doubling my rental income. And soon I was hooked and hell bent on mastering this strategy and building a true system around it. This attitude of achieving mastery in a particular field is really was the foundation for my success going forward. It's like that Pokemon song that goes like, I wanna be the very best. Like no one ever was. And I'll stop now because I probably wouldn't get onto American Idol with my singing abilities. Now I knew that if I kept at it and kept improving, it was only a matter of time before I became successful in real estate investing. I also learned a second thing along my journey to success. And that is to recognize and use your superpower. For you, maybe your superpower is that you are creative. This can come in handy when you start envisioning ways to make your property really stand out and pop so that it is super attractive for your target tenant. Or maybe your superpower is that you're really great at doing research. This allows you to really look into the housing demand in a particular city so that you can mitigate your risk investing. Now, my superpower was that I was really good at math. Growing up, I was even obsessed with it. And when I got to college, I started building my own Excel spreadsheet calculators. As you can imagine, very soon I had a lot of fun building deal analysis calculators for real estate, financial freedom calculators, and financial projections. And you could totally call me a nerd. I won't be offended. Nerds rule the world anyways, nowadays. So I became really excited to finally figure out the numbers on a rental to make profits. Like, okay, if I pay this much, my mortgage will be X, my rental income will be Y, which means that after I pay my expenses, I will make Z amount. Now, if you want help calculating the real estate numbers for yourself, I recommend going to biggerpockets.com. They have deal analysis calculators available, or you can go to my website, www.newbierealestateinvesting.com slash guide. So now that I finally figured out all the math behind the real estate, all that there was left to do for me was to buy properties and rent them out by the bedroom. I wanted to approach this at a good pace. So I decided to buy one property per year. I chose this one property a year goal because it felt like it was attainable. It wasn't too scary, nor was it too easy for me. Instead, it felt like a good challenge and I love challenges because that's when I feel the most excited to do something. Let me know in the comments below what rate of home buying feels good for you. Make sure that it's not too easy, that it's not even motivating for you. And make sure it's not too hard, that you don't really believe that you can achieve it. Using this one house a year challenge, after seven and a half years, I was able to replace my full pharmacist income with a little over six houses in rental income. I was so overjoyed and ecstatic when working as a pharmacist finally became optional for me. When you get to that finish line as well, trust me, it will feel a bit surreal, but completely worth it. At this point, I could travel where I wanted to and pursue passion projects such as coaching others how to get into real estate investing and becoming a black belt in jujitsu. 
You can see here a picture of all my pharmacist colleagues when I retired. I ended up treating them to an all expenses paid, really nice and delicious Roos Chris Steakhouse dinner. Now I hope my story will inspire you to get started in real estate investing as well, as soon as possible, because real estate is truly one of the most powerful tools to build your wealth and achieve financial freedom. And if you love this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and share it with others so that it can reach more people who are struggling with just getting started in real estate investing. Thank you, and I'll see you on the next video.